guys, how's everybody doing? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's Miska Cat or Jen here. Um, checking back in with another video. Um, I do have a bit of progress to show you. Um, I have some stash to show you, and I'm going to let you guys um, in on some upcoming plans starting tomorrow. Um, first of all, I want to apologize. It's taking me so long to make another video. I tried so hard on Saturday. I had recorded three separate one hour videos and just ran into nothing but technical difficulties. So I called it quits for the day. It's Tuesday now. Um, so I'm going to try this again and hopefully, hopefully technology will be on my more, more on my side today. So, um, it actually did kind of have a benefit though. Um, because of the extra couple days that I had, I actually got some more progress done. Um, so I'm not showing you something that's half done. I actually get to show you something kind of finished, which makes me excited. And like I said, I just got a little bit more progress done. So, so it kind of works out a little bit better. So, um, so let's get started. Um, the first thing that I'm going to show you is my Lakeside Needlecraft cell. Um, I did get some more progress done on it and... I will insert a picture here on what it looked like the last time um, that you guys all saw it. And I do believe I screwed up on my last video. Um, I believe I was saying and calling it 28 count even weave that I was stitching this on. That was a terrible vicious lie. Um, I'm really stitching it on 32 count Belfast from Picture This Plus in Crystal Pansy. Um, so it's a little bit smaller than the 28 count. But here's where I got to this week. Um, they did release the next block, which is a cute little wizard. Um, so I did actually get a small start on him the other day. Um, and I did get some more work on the border. So this is where where it is right now. So like I say, I did get a little bit more done on the wizard and then I got some more done in the bottom bottom corner there. I'm still really really enjoying this one. Um, I really still love that border. It's just it's so beautiful and it's so effective with only a few colors so and just get in a little bit closer. That's the bottom part of my wizard right there. So, and some of the bottom corner. And I also do want to add that this dark blue right here is actually going to be repeated on the other side of the border. I'm going to leave that till the very end. Because I'm doing it with variegated silks, um, I want to make sure it's a consistent um, thread and that I'm not just starting and stopping it based on where the page is. So, so I'm going to leave that till all the inside border is done. Um, I also feel like doing it after all the detail is done, I have less chance of actually screwing it up. So we're going to deal with that as soon as the rest of the border is done. So that is the Lakeside Needlecraft cell. Um, like I say, I am still really enjoying this one. Um, didn't get as much done on it as I would have liked, but I mean, like I say, I did make a bit of progress on the next, on the last square that just got released, so I'm happy about that. So, the next thing that I want to show you is my Chatelaine Butterfly Lace. Um, I will insert a picture here of what it looked like the last time you guys saw it. And on Saturday, I hadn't actually completed the whole butterfly, the big one in the center. Um, because I got a little bit um, bit more time to work on it, I actually did get it completed. So I'm pretty excited about that. I love the way it looks. Um, so here is where it looks right now. And... I'll get in a little closer for the butterfly. Sorry, my lighting is really terrible today. It's kind of overcast and it's more in the afternoon, so it's not the best lighting. But that is another large butterfly done. I made another start 
on the next butterfly beside it and here's actually the whole whole thing so far so I'm really happy with getting getting that last butterfly done so um, I find with these the detail really comes out when you put in the back stitching so um, yeah, it didn't look like a whole lot until until the outlining was complete, but it's very effective now, so I'm really happy with the way this is turning out. And I do have to say, you guys are terrible in such a good way. Every time I feel like I've had enough of this one and I want to put it away and just not look at it for a bit, you guys give me the most inspiring and like encouraging comments and just your compliments just make me want to work on this so much more and and I really appreciate it because sometimes I think you get to a point with a project and you're just not quite as excited with it anymore and you guys are really helping keep me excited with this one so thank you all so much um, so that is that one unfortunately that's kind of the only two projects that I worked on for two weeks um, I do have some exciting plans coming um, I am actually taking off um, out of Edmonton uh, tomorrow morning. Um, I might actually attempt doing a bit of vlogging and see how that goes. Um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. But I'm gonna try the try the vlogging. Um, I'm actually taking off. I'm going to a four day stitch camp out by Red Deer. Um, it's called Camp on a Stitch. It's actually. Um, Oh, what do I want to say? It's um, organized by a frame shop in the West End um, of Edmonton, if any of you guys are from Edmonton. And it's actually right across the street from West Edmonton Mall. So even if you're in the city and you happen to be up by West Edmonton Mall, um, it's right across the street on the north side. It's called the Frame Corner. Um, what it is, is it's a gift shop, kind of stitch shop, uh, frame shop, obviously. Um, the lady that runs and owns the store is fantastic. Her and her husband uh, run the store. She herself is a stitcher and um, her husband does all the framing and he does amazing framing. He does all the specialty cut work mats and everything. So as soon as Butterfly Lace is done, that's where it's going to get framed because I think it warrants some some fancy matting and some special like hand cut mat work and the whole the whole shebang right so I'm very excited about that but every um, twice a year they actually arrange this um, stitch camp so you go down whenever you whatever you want pretty much I mean it starts on Wednesday you can go for Thursday you can go for Friday you can go for however long that you want um, and it ends on Sunday afternoon. So um, I'm going to be leaving tomorrow. I'm going for the full the full four days. Um, and they rent this um, uh, this camp. You get a room for your your price and whatnot else. All your meals are paid for. Um, so basically, um, you just load up your vehicle with all your stitching stuff, and you drive down there, and you set it up, and you plant plant yourself and there's no worries, there's no stress, you don't have to do anything. Um, there's some walking trails if you want to go for a walk. Um, so there's other things to do if you need to like get up and walk around. She brings in a lady that does massages and another lady that does manicures and pedicures and eyebrow tinting and it's such a good time. This is going to be my third time going and I'm so excited. Um, I will actually put a link to the Frame Corners Facebook page. Um, down in the notes. Um, there's also a lady from BC that's gonna go. I believe there's people from Saskatchewan that have gone this time in the fall. They're actually having some ladies from Hawaii that are gonna be there. Um, so it's, it's gonna be a good time. So it's not just for Edmontonians to go and get away. It's for pretty much anybody. So like I say, I will put a link down below if you're interested in checking it out. Um, so what I and my friend agreed to do is 
you guys are probably maybe the same way that you have a lot of larger projects on the go and sometimes some smaller projects that you want to stitch equally as bad kind of get put by the wayside. So what my friend and I decided that we were going to do is we were each going to start a new project every day that we were there. Um, I didn't participate in the crazy January challenge. I didn't participate in stage, stitch mania. Um, so aside from the lake work, Lakeside Needlecraft Sal and the Nora Corbett that I did earlier, I haven't had any new starts this year, so I'm really looking forward to this. So, um, so yeah, I have four new projects kitted up and ready to go, and I'm very excited for them. Um, you just have to excuse me, I have to move the camera, because my notes, I just realized, are underneath it. Sorry! Hopefully I didn't make anybody sick. Got a nice close-up of my hand, that was, I'm sure, lovely. <laughs> so, I'm going to show you the projects that I'm planning on starting. And they are going to be in no particular order, because I find... Uh, the first night that I'm there is usually the day that I get the most accomplished, funny, funny enough. So um, by the next day, there's more people there and it gets busier and there's more people like chit-chatting and, you know, coming around and, and talking to you about the piece that you're working on and you're getting up and you're more interested on what other people are working on. So. So we'll see what I feel like working on on what day. I also thought this was going to be kind of a cool experiment because you're sitting down and you don't have anything else to do all day. You don't have to get up for laundry or dishes or like to feed the animals or anything, right? So it's going to be kind of nice and interesting to sit down with a blank piece of fabric and see actually how much you can stitch in a day. Um, and we'll see if like the different projects make a difference with how much you can actually accomplish. So. Like I say, it should be interesting. So, so the first piece that I have um, that I'm going to be working on is called Away We Ride by Blackbird Designs. I know somebody else is actually stitching this one or planning on stitching this one. If you've started this one, please tell me below. I would love to be, be able to see your progress on it because I absolutely love this chart. I've had it in my stash for like a year now and I would really love to see somebody else's progress on it as well too. So this is A Way We Ride by the Blackbird Designs. And it says, A Way We Ride Till It's Dark as Pitch to Find the Home of the Wicked Witch. And I thought this one would be pretty fitting considering Halloween's just around the corner. So, so that's the first one that I'm going to be working on. I'm going to be stitching this one on... Um, a 28 count even weave in khaki and this is by MCG textiles I've heard some people say that this isn't really a true even weave um, and when I measured it I think it was about 28 by 27 um, threads each way so um, it's when I measured it no it's not a true even weave I'm thinking though for this project because it's not something that has to be perfectly symmetrical like a mandala or um, it's not something that's really heavily detailed like a heaven and earth or something like that, I'm hoping that it'll be alright. Um, it was the closest fabric that I had that was closest, that was the color that I wanted. So, so it's just kind of a brownie greeny color. So that's what that looks like. Um, yeah, so what do you guys think? Do you think I'll be okay to, to do this project on there? I think it'll be okay. Um, I have another concern with this one. Um, if you remember from my last video, I made, um, a comment about being able to go pick out my threads from an actual, um, LNS as opposed to ordering them online. And this is exactly why... Uh, where is it here? So I have two threads in here, not two threads, but 
the chart recommended to get two of the gentle art sample or yeah the gentle art wood smoke and it's color 1130 so I did get two of them and if you notice they are two very different colors So this top one here is more on the gray side and this one down here is more on the brown side. Now when I looked at the pattern, this color is actually used for the house in the middle here. So what do you guys think? Do you think I should go with more the brown color or should I do the more gray color? Because I'm not, not really sure exactly which one I think is going to look better. So, I don't know. I'm kind of hoping I'm not going to have to use both of them just for the house. Um, but I probably won't know until I actually start stitching and kind of see how big it's actually going to turn out. So, if you guys feel like leaving me your suggestions down below, please let me know. Because, um, yeah, they are very, very different. So... So I'm not exactly too sure. In the picture it almost looks more like the top one, but I don't know. I could be wrong. So anyways, if you guys want to leave me your comments and your thoughts on the whole thing, please, uh, like I say, do so in the comments and kind of help guide me on my way because I've never run across this situation before. I've actually never used the Gentle Art Sampler threads before, so um, I'm first of all really excited to be able to do so, but like I say, that kind of concerns me. So. Um, I will be checking comments and whatnot else while I'm there. Um, so yeah, maybe I'll leave this for my, my last day project. We'll see. So um, I'll run through the rest of the colors because I do think that they're really pretty. This is Brandy. This is Mulberry. It called for two onyxes um, and both of them looked um, the same. It also called for three garden gates, and again, those all looked um, very similar. This is pecan pie. This is pumpkin pie. This is heirloom gold. This is maple syrup. And this is wood rose. So, and I think they're all going to look really good on this fabric. I kind of did did a bit of a floss toss, so. so that's how they're going to look on the fabric. I'm not too worried about losing, losing any of them, so. So that's the first project that I'm going to be starting in the next couple days, so I'm very excited about that one. The next one I'm going to be starting is a Plum Street Sampler and it is called Gathering Honey and that's what it's going to look like. And I bought this one because the quote at the bottom, um, they say it in, in Alice in Wonderland, the animated version. So I was kind of hooked. As soon as I read it so and it says how doth the little little busy bee improve each shining hour and gather honey all the day from every opening flower um, so this one was originally the model was stitched on 40 count um, even weave or linen I guess it would be um, using one strand over two threads so I didn't have any 40 count in my stash um, I believe on the 40 count, um, stitching it over two would have made it about a seven, nine by seven, I believe. Um, I didn't, like I say, have any 40 count. So what I chose was a 28 count. This is Highland and this is by Picture This Plus as well too. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch it one over one on 28 count. So it's going to make it a little bit smaller. Um, it's going to actually make it closer to about a 5 by 7 So, so yeah, it's going to be super tiny and super cute, and I'll probably just turn it into an accent pillow. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited about 
about doing this one. And this one called for um, the Gentle Art Sampler threads as well too. Um, this one is Endive. This one is Wood Trail. This is Mountain Mist. This one is Tarnish Gold. This one is Grecian Gold. Uh, there's another Tarnish Gold. And see this one too. These are both Tarnish Gold. And again, there's a color difference in these two. So one's more quite a bit darker and this one is a little bit more orangier. So again, I'm not exactly which too sure which one I'm going to use. Um, I think with maybe doing it on the smaller count, maybe I won't have to use both skeins, hopefully. Um, but we'll see. I haven't actually looked up the pattern to see where those are actually called for, so, so we'll see. Um, this one is called Oatmeal. This one is Old Hickory. This one is Lamb's Wool. This one is Brandy again. This one is Wheatfields. Old Red Paint. And Roasted Marshmallow. And this is how all of these ones are going to look on this fabric. So. I'm a little concerned about some of the lighter colors on here, um, but most of them are going to be surrounded by other darker colors, like some of the lighter colors are down at the bottom here and also in the little motifs here. The only thing that I'm really concerned about is this little hen guy right there. Um, he might get a little lost, um, and I might have to swap out that color for something else, but I'm going to wait till I get to that point and see exactly how I feel about where he ends up on my fabric. Who knows? It might not be so bad. So, um, so that's the next project that I'm going to be starting while I'm there. Oop. So like I say, that's the Plum, C Plum Street Sampler and Gathering Honey. The next one that I'm going to start um, is a Jeanette Douglas design and this is called Acorn Stitches Sampler and this one I had actually taken with me to the last stitch camp that I had gone to. Um, I took it there for several re reasons. Number one, I was actually going to start it last, last spring. Um, and the other reason that I took it is Jeanette Douglas herself was actually at the stitch camp and teaching a course. Now, I didn't register for her course, but I did get a chance to meet her, and I have to say she is the most amazing person. She is so funny, and she was so kind. Like, she went around to each of the 50 ladies that was there and took the time to talk to them about their stitching and what they were working on and offer them suggestions and advice. And it was like that part was free. Like she was just such a social person and just amazing. Um, I actually did get her to sign the back of my pattern because, well, why not, right? So, so I did have full intentions on starting this when she was there. Um, I didn't get a chance to though. I got distracted by I think it was actually the butterfly lace. I got kind of hooked on working on that one and didn't want to put it away. Um, but I did buy this one and it says at the top here with the threads, the threads were included. So I did buy the thread pack with this. Um, she was amazing. She sat down with me and she sorted all my threads for me. So in her words, I can probably do it a lot faster than you could do it. And she is so right. So it was so kind of her to do that for me. I had taken probably about four different uh, types of fabric. She helped me pick out a fabric that she thought it would all look good on. Um, so the fabric that she helped me choose is, uh, what is it? Crystal Ancient by Picture This Plus and it, this is a 28 count as well too. So it's not showing up quite, 
quite true to color. It's more orangey in real life, kind of like a apricotty, apricotty kind of orange with some blue, blue modeling in it. Um, and it's got the sparklies in it as well. So she thought that, that everything would look really good on this one. And like I say, she helped me sort out all of my threads for me. So we got everything sorted out into little plus away baggies. Actually, I should do it that way. Then you can actually see the, the colors. I'm not going to go through all these because they are um, just little little chunks of thread. So um, you're not... It's not like it's showing you a full skein. Um, I do have to say though, there are quite a few different threads in here that I had never heard of before. Um, like this one, for example, this is actually a full skein. This is Gloriana Luminescence. It is a silk. Oop. It is a silk and it's a full skein of it here. And this is in the color Apricot Grove. see if I can. So that's kind of what it looks like. It's really pretty and I think if I understand correctly the luminescence um, it calls for this one in apricot grove and then it calls for the actual six-stranded silk in apricot grove and they look very similar in color. Um, so here's the silk, the little chunk of it that I have. So I would think that they're kind of the same colorway and what is available as a six-stranded silk is also available as a luminescence. So, so like you see, they're very similar in the color. So I'm very excited to be working on this. Um, I did talk to her about how much thread came in the thread packs, if it was going to be enough, if I had to be super stingy. She said, um, as long as you don't have to frog too much, you should be okay for the amount of thread that they give you. So um, that makes me very happy. When I did my Victoria, Tre Victoria Sampler, um, the Trick or Treat, I also bought the thread pack with that. And while some of the colors I had enough thread over to probably do the project two or three times, there were, I think, two colors that um, I was very close to running out on. So, so from what I understand, I should be okay with this one. Um, like I say, I am pretty stingy anyways, so I should be okay. So um, the only other thing with this that I had to buy separately were the Mill Hill beads. So I had to get 330 which is a coppery, coppery color. And this one, which is 3053, which is a purpley antique seed bead. So those are the two that I had to buy separately. They're just Mill Hill beads, so I wasn't too concerned about that. Um, and yeah, like I say, the rest of my floss is separated and ready to go for this one. And I'm very excited to work on this one because, like I say, I meant to start it six months ago and never got the chance. So, so that is my next, the next project that I'm going to be taking with me. The next project, I'm terrified to start. I've had it in my stash for probably two to three years. I love it. I want to stitch it, but it scares me. <laughs> Do you guys have any projects like that? Because... I feel weird. It's just a cross stitch. It's not the end of the world. If I screw it up, when you think about it, it's just thread and fabric. It's not like something's going to explode or anything, but I'm pretty nervous to stitch this one. Um, I'm so nervous to stitch this one, actually, that I'm actually taking a backup um, in case this one doesn't work out. I'm a little concerned that maybe there will be too many people talking and you know when people come up and kind of stare over your shoulder just to see what you're working on I think it might be a little too distracting but I'm not sure 
I'm going to take it just in case. Like I said, I'm going to take it back up anyways, just, just in case this one's not working out so well. So this one is called the Bumblebee Lace Sampler, and it is by the Victoria Sampler as well, too. And I know you're all probably thinking, wow, that's a lot of hard anger. No wonder you're terrified to work on this. And honestly, it's not the hard anger that's, that's freaking me out. Um, I bought the bead pack for this one as well, too. So this is my, my little thread pack. I haven't separated the threads or anything yet. Um, but this is what's kind of terrifying me. This little tiny piece of wire right here and this itty bitty piece of ribbon somehow you combine these you combine them to make the bees wings somewhere else in here are the materials which are pretty much just regular threads to make the bee I don't know how that's gonna work <laughs> So, if you look at the back, this little guy and his little tiny wings, you have to make all that. And that's the part that's terrifying me. I've never done surface embroidery before. The flowers, these little guys right here, is all going to be this pink ribbon at the bottom of my bag here. So... I don't know. Have you guys ever done surface embroidery before? I think that's what you call it. I could be totally wrong with that. I'm a little stressed out because I've never done that before. The hard anger by itself is enough to make me a little intimidated, um, but it's definitely the, the dimensional stuff that's really, really kind of making me nervous. So again, like I say, it's only, it's only wire and thread and gloss and fabric. It's really not the end of the world, but I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this. I don't know how this is going to work. So if you guys have any hints on how to do this either, I will take all the suggestions that you guys have because I don't know. A little stressful. I'm pretty sure that the instructions are going to be good. I'm not going to probably have an issue once I start doing it, but it's just the thought of tried to assemble everything and put on my on my fabric that's kind of stressing me out. So like I say, if you can offer any advice, please let me know. So again, the only other thing that I had to buy um, aside from the thread pack, it did say that I had to get my own purl thread. So I had to buy a number 12 and a number eight. I don't want to take these out of the bag. It's just white purl cotton. It's Honestly, nothing too fancy. So, um, the fabric that I decided to do this one on is going to be 32 count Joblin in Sandcastle by Wichelt. So that's what the fabric looks like. It's pretty, um, it's pretty neutral. It has a little bit of modeling. I thought it would work really well with the threads that are in there. Um, I didn't want anything too flashy, so. So we'll see how that goes. And this was a super kind of scrap piece of cheap fabric in my stash. So I figured if I screw it up, then it's only $8 lost, not a $30 or $60 piece of fabric down the toilet. So, so yeah, that is my last one that I'm going to take with me and I'm going to start. So, um, so those are the four projects that I'm planning on starting. Um, I'll show you this one too, just in case. Um, this is my backup plan. This is Ashley Shepherd's Bush. I've also had this one in my stash forever as well too. Um, and this one as well came with all the fabric and the beads um, and the thread. Um, I haven't separated this yet because that's how determined I am to work on my bumblebee as opposed to this one. Um, so the bumblebee is all ready to go. This one is not. So like I say, that's, that's how much I want to start that one and actually give it a go. So this is Happy Haunting though. 
And like I said, I've had this one in my stash for a really long time and it's just super cute. I will get this one stitched one day. Um, Cause yeah, it's, it's Halloween, my favorite holiday. So I have to stitch everything Halloween if I can. So, so anyways, like I say, those are my four projects. Um, so now the next thing that I need to do is just show you my haul that I got in. Okay, so haul. I did get a little bit of it um, from my LNS and um, when I was there. Um, I actually had gone there for their advice on my Gathering Honey piece. Um, I wanted to know what their thoughts kind of were on stitching on, on such a small count. Um, the part that I was really concerned about was the lettering. So I did look at a couple examples that they had in their shop. I think it'll be fine. Um, they put my mind at ease and whatnot else. And of course, while I was there, I had to buy something because I can't walk out completely empty handed because that would be rude, right? So um, I was actually very good. I only got one chart. Um, this is called Little Hedgy. It's by Just Nan. And he is just so cute. I have the two little witchy mice. Um, I want to stitch these. Um, one day as well um, but he's just so cute I think what I'll do is I'll probably just turn them into ornaments or something but um, he is super cute and he came with all of the little pins and the little um, the bottom stand and like the little leaf and the beads and everything so so this is what I walked out with so he's just so cute and then I did get my order from 123 Stitch. Um, so I got a couple of charts with those. The first one is another Jeanette Douglas, because ever since meeting her, I of course want to support her even more. Second of all, because she's Canadian and there's not that many Canadian designers, I feel. Um, so I'm very happy to support them whenever I can. So, so this is her Summer of Escornu Stackers. So it comes with three different patterns and I have to say this was totally unexpected and I was so, um, I was thrilled. Um, when I bought this I thought it was just the charts and when I got it I opened it up and it actually comes with the silk for these and the little buttons which was a very nice surprise and I totally wasn't expecting that so so like I say that was that was definitely a nice surprise so um, and I was actually looking on 123 stitch again last night um, and she has some autumn Biscorn news um, so I might have to order those as well too one of these days but um, yeah I love I love these so um, actually, I bought this pattern with somebody in mind. Um, I actually have a lady on my walk, and she used to cross-stitch. And apparently she has a hard time with it now. She has really bad arthritis and is unable to stitch anymore. So um, what she does is she actually quilts still. And I was delivering mail to her the other day. Well, actually, this was... When was it? The beginning of summer I was delivering delivering to her and I told her that I was going to the stitch camp in in the spring and she kind of looked at me and said oh you cross stitch and I said yeah I, I, I do and she's like well I have something for you and she went she's like are you going to be coming back I said well I'm not planning on it but I'll come back anyways to make a long story short I ended up going back to her place um, about half an hour later and she handed me over probably three bags worth of cross stitching materials. Most of it was the floss boxes and like everything was bobbinated and everything ready to go and what else and and she's like well I can't use this stuff anymore so if you can use it and we'll use it I will happily give it to you so I totally made out like a bandit that was so kind of her to do that and and when I saw these, I thought, well, you know what, she quilts. So I picked up some some pins and I figured I would make her one of these just as a little thank you to to for her generosity, right? So um, one of these days I am going to be starting 
one of these for her and then I'm just going to drop it in her mailbox and make a nice little card and and whatnot else for her so so that's one of the other patterns that I got um, the next pattern that I got is by La Di Da it's called Little Brick House I love this it is so cute I don't know if it's like the checkerboard house or the flowers I I don't know I just think this one is so cute and I love it so this is called like I say little brick house so cute um, another one that I got was the butterfly garden and this is by the drawn thread and I originally saw this one it was on another floss tube video it was by mrs. milky bar kid actually no it wasn't one of her videos it was her blog she had done this and she had substituted all the all the threads for um, Jodre and Moe's um, silks I believe is what she subbed out for basically to use some stuff from her stash um, I don't think she's actually making YouTube videos anymore. She was actually probably the first YouTuber that I actually religiously watched. So I'll put a link to her channel down below. I'll also put a link to her blog. Um, I find with her she stitches a lot of um, patterns that I don't see on a regular basis, which is kind of nice. Um, so. Um, yeah, she just she's very good at giving me some different ideas and some different websites and different places to check out. So, um, like I said, I'll put a link down below. Um, but I saw her do this one and I fell in love with it. So, like I say, this is the Butterfly Garden by the Drawn Thread. There we go. And I believe this one has some specialty stitches in it as well, too. I could be wrong. I haven't had that close of a look at the pattern, but I'm pretty sure it does. Um, the next one that I got is a Shepherd's Bush, and this is called Bee Attitude Sampler. Um, this is what this one looks like. I have to say, I've never stitched one of their patterns before, but I love them. They look so cute and simple to do and... I have actually quite a few of them in my stash, but I, like I said, I haven't found the time to actually stitch one yet, so. So I will be stitching that one hopefully soon. Um, and then the last one that I got was a design by Lisa, and it's If Cats Could Talk. And it says, if cats could talk, they would probably lie. Which, if anybody owns cats, you will know is probably true. So I have plans for this one to probably turn it into an accent pillow when I get a chance to stitch it. I think it's too cute though, so he's got like a kind of a little smirk on his face. So so I do want to stitch that one as well too. Um, I also did buy some PDF patterns. Um, they are, again, uh, something that... Um, was inspired to me by Mrs. Milky Bar Kid. Um, they are some hardanger patterns. They are by Mabel Figworthy's. I will put a link to her site um, down below. Um, there are two sets of patterns that I ordered. Um, one is called the what's it called? Seasons. Excuse me while I look it up. Uh, there's a weather pack, Song of the Weather. So that was, to my knowledge, a stitch along that she had several years ago. So I think they're little three by three kind of coaster size pieces. Um, because it was a stitch along, it was kind of meant for people that had never done Hardanger before. So every month she would release a little three by three Hardanger pattern. Um, the first one being very simple, um, so there's no cut work in the first pattern at all. And then gradually as you go through the months, you get progressively a little bit more challenging pieces. And each one you learn a different stitch or a different technique or whatnot else. Um, so I bought 
the Song of the Weather um, pack, and then I noticed that she had um, another stitch along going on this year, and it was called Round in Circles. Now, for, and it was kind of the same idea. So you get the first pattern, and it's just a little three by three um, pattern. And as you progress through the months, it gets more difficult and, you know, different techniques and whatnot else, right? So um, I signed up for that one. If anybody is interested in Hardanger, I'm going to recommend this, this stitch along. Um, first of all, it's super cheap. It's four pounds, which you're getting 12 patterns. That is an incredible deal just on its own. Um, second of all, when you sign up for her stitch along, you get access to her blog. And I haven't read through everything, but she basically takes each pattern and she walks you through every step of it, every step. Um, and she takes the full month to do it. So she tells you how to do half of it. And then she basically says, and in two weeks, we'll come back and we'll discuss how to finish this, this chart up or whatever. Um, and I took a look through her blog and she tells you where to go down for the thread, how to tie it off in the back, what threads you should be going and looping it through and just the instruction and the detail is phenomenal. So if anybody is considering doing some heart anger um, or wants, you know, to just try it out, like I say, for the price, it's really hard to beat. Um, and yeah, I will put a link to that as well too below. Um, check it out and see what you guys think. Um, I haven't started it yet. I'm looking really forward to it. Actually, I was thinking of taking some supplies and whatnot else and doing a square every day during my stitch stitch camp. So I don't know if I'm going to do that or not. I was looking on the Jabre, um website and she has Basically, if she dyes it in cotton threads, you can order it in the different pearls. And I think that's what I want to do instead of just using solid color pearls. So I might wait to do these until um, I place an order with her and actually decide on some, some threads that I want to order and whatnot else. And then get some fancy hand dyed um, pearl cotton. So we'll see. But like I say, if anybody's even thinking of doing some hard anger, I got a lot of super nice comments on my trick or treat um, Victoria sampler that I had done. Um, the instructions in that pattern were phenomenal, but if you're looking for something um, more detailed, um, I would really recommend um, checking out Mabel Fig Figworthy. Um, so yeah, like I said, I will put a link to that below. Um, the other thing that I did get as stash. Um, is a couple knitting bowls or yarn bowls actually. Um, I'm going to mention them only because I know some of you do knit or crochet and I just love these so I want to pass on the love and where I got them from. I did order both of these from Etsy. Um, the first one that I got is from Griffinwick. So that's the card and it is my camera will focus. It's Robin Griffin and I will put a link down to their Etsy store down below in the comments as well too. But this is the bowl that I got. My phone is ringing. Sorry. So this is the bowl that I got. It's got some blackbirds on it and some scroll work. And I just love it. So cute. And then it's like a bluey green on the inside. So that's the first one that I got. And I have to say with both of these, the shipping was super fast. And, you know, I highly recommend both of these um, Etsy shops. They were both awesome. So... Um, so I got that one. The next one I got is, um, first of all, I love this one because of the octopus on it. And second of all, this one came from Vancouver. So to support, a, like I say, another Canadian company um, or Canadian designer, artist, um, 
it was that that's something that I wanted to do as well too so and I just love this the amount of detail like with the flowers and the scroll work that's on this like this one is just so detailed and even the octopus has like little little detailing on him so this is the other one that I got so if you're not really sure what a yarn bowl is for you put your you put your ball of yarn in there and then you loop it through this little hook and then your ball can rotate and turn around and flop all over the place easily without falling off your table or um, I find this is actually helping um, keep my cats away from my my knitting while I'm doing it so that's another huge bonus um, so yeah I love both of them um, there was actually four that I wanted so to only get two I thought was really good for me <laughs> Um, I might have to order the other ones later, but I think two is good for right now, considering I don't knit a whole lot, but I mean, they are still attractive and I like to have them on my, on my bookshelf anyways. So, so that's about it. Oh, and I do want to say too, that this octopus, he actually is continued inside the bowl too, which is, which is cute. Anyways. Um, and this is by the talking clay again. Um, She's on Etsy. Her name was Nancy Walker, and I'll put a link down to her shop um, as well down below. Um, so if you're interested, check out these two shops. Um, like I say, they were, both had great customer service. Um, I will definitely order from either one of them again, too. Um, yeah, so that's it for my video today, you guys. Um, like I say, I'm going to try doing the vlog um, while I'm away at my stitch camp. Um, I gonna try we'll see how it works out I don't know if I'm quite confident enough yet to have a room full of ladies um, think that I'm talking to myself yet although I'm pretty sure 90% of them already think I'm nuts um, so my ending got cut off a little bit um, I had a phone call coming through and that was really kind of strange um, to have that show up on my iPad um, I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for watching for subscribing um, if you guys have any suggestions for me on what I should do with regards to uh, my gentle art sampler threads being two different colors, if you have any suggestions on which one you think would look better or worse. Um, also, like I say, if you can give me any suggestions on how to do any surface embroidery, that would be fantastic. Um, again, like I say, thank you so much for the encouraging comments. You guys are really keeping me motivated on my butterfly lace. I'm not going to be working on it for a few days, um, which is, I think, what I need. But I'm hoping when I get back from my stitch camp, I will be motivated again to work on it. Um, I'm actually uh, taking it. I'm trying to enable one of the ladies there that she needs to start this one and order our, the kit and the supplies and everything. Um, and this is what she should be working on instead of her other projects. So um, I'm really glad I got that last butterfly done. Because, um, yeah. The more I can do on it, the more I'm sure she'll be um, encouraged to to buy her own and make her own. Um, so thank you guys so much. Um, I hope you all have a great stitchy week. Like I said, I'm going to try the vlogging, see how that goes. Um, I'm not going to have access to a computer, so I'm not exactly too sure how much video my iPad and my iPhone can, can hold on to, but hopefully it'll be enough to get me through a couple days. Um, and yeah, I look forward to showing you guys my progress and hopefully I will get a lot done. And again, thank you all for watching and liking and subscribing and I hope you all have a great stitchy week. Thanks guys. Bye.